The Broncos interviewed David Shaw for the head coaching gig on Wednesday night. Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. I am your host, Matthew Peterson, and we're going to break down the latest Broncos coaching news as the former Stanford Cardinal coach, David Shaw, kind of rendezvoused with some of his old Stanford buddies at Mile High and interviewed for the Broncos head coaching gig. Let me just get this out in the, out in the open right off the bat. Nope. No thanks. I am passing. I do not want David Shaw as head coach, right? I don't think anyone should want David Shaw to be their NFL head coach right now. He has been abysmal at Stanford for the last half decade. I am not interested in hiring David Shaw as the Broncos head coach. Now, there is some interesting rumors out there, which we'll kind of expand on, of could this be sort of a chess piece move as Jim Harbaugh's offensive coordinator? And maybe Shaw is coming in as like a, formality for head coach that's what they're kind of disguising it as but in reality they want to get to know David Shaw because Jim Harbaugh might be putting together his staff and this is their way of starting to move some pieces so we'll get to that in a little bit but let's talk about David Shaw a little bit and why he interviewed for the Broncos head coaching job because outside of some Stanford connections with Denver's ownership it really doesn't make much sense if you ask me here but there is a connection right as Mike Kliss points out, that the Broncos head coaching search group, CEO Greg Penner, and fellow owners Kerry Penner, Condoleezza Rice, they all have Stanford ties, of course, and Rice currently director at Stanford's Hoover Institute. Uh, Institute. So we can maybe see of uh, David Shaw was in the area, right? He's like, hey, I got a layover. Can I come by and see the facilities? And they're like, while you're here. We have a head coaching opening. You wouldn't be interested, would you? And like, well, let's shoot the shift for a little bit. I hope that's all it was. I hope they're not looking at this as, you know what? David Shaw put together one heck of an interview. He's at the top of our leaderboard because I'm not into it. I'm not buying it, right? Look at what he's done at Stanford the last five years. He had a great stretch there. He did, but it's, it was a while ago. He has not gotten over four wins in the last four seasons. That's not something I want to hire, right? That's not a coach I want to bring on. And honestly, not even all that interested in him joining the Broncos coaching staff really across the board here. But I have seen some Twitter rumors already of people connecting the dots of Jim Harbaugh, potential head coach, looking to build a staff, wants to kind of reunite the band a little bit. And who could that include? Greg Greg Roman was his OC when he was in San Francisco. Vic Fangio was his, his DC in San Francisco. But before he went to San Francisco with the Niners, he was at Stanford, right? And David Shaw was his offensive coordinator. Look at the boys, right? Hanging out on the Stanford sideline. So maybe this is Jim Harbaugh going, listen, if I'm getting the job, here's my potential staff, right? I don't really know if that's actually a question asked during the interview process of if you were to be hired, who would you want as your OC and your DC? Maybe they'd say who you have in mind, that kind of stuff. But maybe he tossed out David Shaw. And they're like, you know what? We're really good friends with David. We'll have him swing by. We'll get some Danishes. We'll get some donuts. And we'll talk shop for a little bit. And we would see if he's a good fit as a Broncos offensive coordinator under Jim Harbaugh. So Shaw and Harbaugh, they go back. Go back to 2006. He was Harbaugh's wide receiver coach at San Diego. Then he followed him up the Pacific, and he was his OC and wide receiver slash running back coach for a good stretch from 07 to 2010. Then Harbaugh left for the NFL. David Shaw took over and has been the head coach until a month and a half ago or so. But here's my kind of hiccup with this idea. Let's say this rumor is true, right, where it is we are – the Broncos are bringing David Shaw – in the building because they want to hire Harbaugh and they want to get to know his potential offensive coordinator. Is if, if David Shaw did not have a good meeting with Denver, is that really going to derail them hiring Jim Harbaugh? No. Like, there's no way, in my opinion, that Jim Harbaugh's coordinator pick would get in the way of them hiring Harbaugh if they want him to be their number one guy. I don't really see why they feel the need to disguise a head coaching interview as really an OC interview. You know what I mean? That, that To me, that doesn't make a ton of sense. So if they want Harbaugh, Harbaugh's coordinator pick is not going to get in the way of whether or not they make a decision to hire him. That, that That's my two cents on it. And also, for everyone saying, dream Broncos coaching staff, Harbaugh head coach, David Shaw offensive coordinator, 
no. I, I don't really want David Shaw as an offensive coordinator. I mean, he had a long run in the NFL before the collegiate ranks. Really good football coach. Not really interested in learning if he can turn around his coaching career, which has been in the toilet the last three or four years, at the pro level in a time where we don't have time to waste. Denver is currently on the longest postseason drought of any team with a Super Bowl ring, and I'm not willing to gamble on, let's see how David Shaw does for Jim Harbaugh. No, I'd rather see an NFL coordinator come over like Greg Roman or someone who's been doing the job in the pros for the last decade or so. Now, the Broncos interview list continues to grow here. They did a virtual interview with Jim Harbaugh first. They did an in-person, the first of a couple, with Ejiro Evera, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Jim Caldwell did an interview, former head coach of the Colts and the Lions, and now David Shaw. So, we're going to get to some other interview notes like Sean Payton and Raheem Morris. But while we talk about David Shaw, my producer, Nick Roloff, one of the best in the biz, he went to kind of a smaller school, St. Bonaventure, so he doesn't have like a Saturday rooting interest. I went to Tennessee. So I'm curious, shout out your college. Let me know which team you're riding and dying with every single Saturday. Sound off in the comment section below. Now, speaking of interviews, we have check marks next to all the uh, candidates who have interviewed so far, and we'll have one next to Sean Payton on Tuesday. The Broncos cannot interview Sean Payton until January 17th, and the plan is for them to go to L.A., interview Payton, and interview Raheem Morris, who is the Rams defensive coordinator. Now, I know that the Rams didn't have a phenomenal season. I think Raheem Morris is a very good plan B right there with Dan Quinn. He does have previous head coaching experience, but he's definitely not one of my top three guys. He's like the bottom tier of tier two here. But Sean Payton will be interviewing with the Broncos first. So if Denver goes into this interview and wows him, maybe Sean Payton goes, you know what? Cancel Arizona, which, by the way, doesn't even have a GM yet, so they might be behind a couple weeks. Cancel the Texans. Cancel whatever. I want to go to Denver. I wanted Russell Wilson in New Orleans. I think Hackett horribly mismanaged him. I know how to get the best out of him. While everyone's looking at a big pile of steaming poop, I see a hidden gem in there, right? Kind of like Marley and me. When he ate the engagement ring, there's a diamond in that turd, and he's going to find it. Maybe. Probably not. Okay. Let's talk about Ejiro Ever, though, as a potential sleeper candidate for this head coaching gig because a pretty well um, NFL media member, which we'll look at in just a second, is all over Evero. But first, we have a battle right now between our Saints channel here at Chat Sports. They're about 1,000 subs behind. We used to have a decent, healthy lead on them, but the guys in the Big Easy, they have stepped up their game. So I want to create some more separation. If you're competitive like I am and you want to get free Broncos coaching news and rumors, subscribe to the channel today. Let's get on to the Evero segment of today's show, though. So Lewis Riddick tweeted out, We hear a lot about head coaching candidates at this time of year and their qualifications. Based primarily off statistical performance, which I think is a bit of a flawed way of looking at it. I'll say firsthand, nobody I had the chance to talk to this year impressed me more from A to Z than Broncos defensive coordinator Ejiro Evero. And Evero is getting a lot of head coaching buzz right now from the Colts, from the Texans. This is just a very good example of, yes, his defense was awesome this year. And that's probably why he's getting a lot of attention. But it's also serving as a good reminder of there's a human element to this. They're not hiring someone based on how many sacks Baron Browning got, right? They are hiring a leader of a franchise, of the biggest sports league in the entire world. That's a huge decision, right? So with that, it's serving as a good kind of note here of Evero. Shout out to him because he is clearly on his way to becoming a bigger leader and a head coach most likely one day in this league. I also want to plug this though. This might be one of those instances where if Denver lets Evero take the word, not take, but if the Colts or the, Te or the Texans hire Evero as their head, co head coach, and he does great things there, right? He goes on to be one of the best Texans head coach in franchise history, which isn't saying a lot. But are we going to look back kind of like we do with Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay? And ESPN loves to revisit that picture of look at all these phenomenal coaches that were with the Washington Redskins, I know, about 10 years ago. 
How do they let them leave? I never understood that because what were they supposed to do when Shanahan McVay were the wide receiver coach and an offensive intern? Just fire their head coach on the spot because they've got a feeling in a couple of years this offensive intern is going to be one heck of a coach in L.A. I've always thought that was a weird thing to shame Washington or any other team that had a really good coordinator and they let him go take a head coaching job elsewhere. Who's ever fired their head coach because they go, I know we've got a good head coach right now, but I've got a good feeling about our tight ends coach. We can't let him leave. I always thought that was a bit bizarre. All right, we're going to wrap up the show in just a couple minutes, but we do have an awesome deal right now at Fanatic. So it's a little chilly out there, and if you want to be repping your Broncos in style while also staying warm, check out this Broncos long sleeve t-shirt. Now, it's 25% off when you go to chatsports.com slash Broncos long. I put that link for everyone in the comments and the description of today's show. Some NFL news to hit on that applies to the Broncos. I'm not going to read it, but Derek Carr posted a goodbye, a farewell tweet, and he note staff it. He put a lot of note staff. I think it was four screenshots. It was a lot. I'm, you know, thanks, but no thanks. I'm definitely not reading it. But Derek Carr, for the last nine years, has had his fair share of wins, more than that, against the Broncos in the AFC West, and it appears his time with the Raiders is coming to a close. He is going to be moving on to maybe the Jets, maybe the Colts. What do you think, Roly? You want to come on the mic for a second? Where do you think he's going to go? I think he is a New Orleans Saint. A New Orleans Saints? Okay, I wasn't expecting that. You see, that's why I bring Roly on. He brings that extra edge. But, yeah, goodbye, Derek Carr. I want to know, Derek Carr is a top blank quarterback. Top 10? He's not top 10, right? Is he top 12? Like, we love to pick out different numbers. I, I think I can pull together 10 quarterbacks. I'm a pretty big Derek Carr, like, I would hater, denier, anti-truth. Like, I, don't, I just don't think Derek Carr is all that good. But his stats do say otherwise. If you do the blind quarterback resume, he defeats people like me who just don't think Derek Carr is all that. But let me know if you think Derek Carr is a top 10, top 16. I don't know. What do you think, Rolly? We'll come back on for a second time. Two for one special. He's definitely top 15, in my opinion. He's top half of the I've league? I've kind of been a Derek Carr truther. Oh, this boy. year was kind of tough for me. It was. But um, a couple of years ago, when there was rumors of them taking a quarterback when they were drafting high or trading up to draft one, I always thought that was a crazy idea uh -huh. because Carr was good. But, eh. Yeah, Carr sucks. All right, appreciate all of you guys for tuning in to today's show. We're going to keep you guys informed, entertained, and up-to-date on the latest Broncos head coaching news and rumors. So, Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already.